wave refraction. Remember when you see the pause video indicator to do that and take great notes. Recall that uh, waves change speed when they change media because uh, the medium is what determines the wave speed. So if we have a source over here, and this is a ripple tank, let's say, and the ripple tank goes from deep over here and at some point here transitions and becomes shallow instantaneously at this junction, uh, our source tapping in the ripple tank would determine the frequency. So the frequency is determined by this tapping. Once the wave gets going, the frequency has already been determined. In the deep water, the waves would go fast or faster than they'll go in the shallow water. And so what happens is these waves at this boundary, since they're going more slowly, they actually end up having a shorter wavelength. So these two wave speeds are different when you go from one medium to another. Here's our ripple tank showing the difference in speeds between the deep water and the shallow water. The wavelength ratio equals the speed ratio. You can see the longer wavelengths up top in the deep water where it's going faster and the shorter wavelengths down below in the shallow water. The wavelength ratio equals the speed ratio. This illustration is a model showing waves that are going fast here. When they change medium, we're going to be going slower. In this model, this is our marching band, and these are the rows of the band members marching downward here. This is a top-down view, and uh, so this is concrete up in this part, and it's mud, thick, sticky mud down below, down here. And here is the transition between the uh, concrete, where you can march fast, and the mud, where you have to march slowly. This is called the normal line that is perpendicular to that transition between these two media. What you'll notice here is when the band members get right to the mud, they slow down. And uh, so they bunch up here. When a wave comes in and it transitions from one medium to another and it transitions straight, in other words, it transitions uh, straight into the other media where the normal line is perpendicular to that, the wave comes straight in, it's going to go straight out, even though it does slow down. Well now, what happens when the band is marching from the concrete to the mud, but the interface is at an angle? In other words, the band isn't marching straight with the normal line the band is transitioning into this other medium at an angle relative to this normal line. So here's our incident. This is called the incident um, part, the incident wave, and this is the normal line. So if we're coming in at an angle and not in line of the normal line, not straight in, what we see that happens here is when the band member gets here, they slow down. And so when this next one gets here, it can keep going a little bit faster, but then they'll slow down and so forth. So all of these band members have had to slow down where these other ones have been able to move forward before they entered. And what you can see here is that we have the same number of band members here as we do here. But since these have slowed down first, they're not as far along. These got to go faster, longer, so they have moved ahead of these. And so now where we had straight lines here coming in at an angle to the normal, these were going in at this angle. Now this is our front of our band right here, and that band front is heading in this direction. And so we can see that this angle relative to the normal coming in is greater than this angle relative to the normal coming out. And so the uh, wave front has bent toward the normal. The wave front is bent toward the normal and uh, this is what refraction looks like. Here's our ripple tank again, but now our transition between deep and shallow water isn't in a straight line here, it's at an angle. And so the waves coming in are at a 45 degree angle relative to the normal. 
the 45 degree waves are bent toward the normal. Notice how the waves after they transition into the slower or shallow water have bent and they also have shorter wavelength. The 55 degree waves are bent toward the normal. The waves bend even more. Here's an illustration that will show just what you just saw. That is, if we have incident waves coming in at an angle relative to the interface between the two media, fast and slow media, and then we will have a bending of the waves that go out. So this is called the incident angle. We use the letter Greek letter theta, theta i for incident, the incoming wave and that angle is relative or uh, reference to the normal line here and then the refracted angle is the angle that the waves bend and move out or into the other medium uh, with. So that's the refracted wave and that's our refracted angle theta r since we're re refracted and we can see that this has bent in w was going straight like this but it's bent in toward the normal. Now things have been reversed. We're going to go from slow to fast and let's see what happens. The 20 degree waves are bent away from the normal. The 30 degree waves are bent away from the normal. The 35 degree waves are bent away from the normal. Notice that we have the refractive effect when we go from slow to fast, but the big difference is instead of the refracted uh, wave bending toward the normal, the refracted wave bends away from the normal. So instead of going straight, right like this, the wave actually bends and goes away from the normal. We still have our incident wave, but now the refracted angle is getting greater. So we've been talking about this refraction, but what exactly is it? What does it really look like? We have this pencil that's half in water and half in air. If I move the pencil away from you, then the light gets to you at different angles. One is coming straight through the air and is not bent, and the one down below and through the water is bent when it goes from the water to the air to your eye. And then when we bring it back, you can see we can put the pencil back together. This is refraction. Refraction happens with light, as you just saw with the pencil. And uh, so let's take a look at what was happening, uh, what happens with light uh, when it comes from one medium to another. When it's in air, light is traveling fast. So air is all around here. And this is a glass block. When uh, light goes from air into glass here, it goes from traveling fast to traveling a little bit slower than it was previously. So let's say we have a ray of light that's incident here, so an incident ray of light coming in. Two things happen, uh, or really two things happen at the boundary here. At the boundary, as you know, when you look uh, in a piece of glass, sometimes you get a reflection, or you should always get a reflection. So uh, when you look in glass, you'll get a reflected ray. So some of the energy from that incident ray gets reflected out and we lose some energy to that reflection. And this, ob this obeys the law of reflection where the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. This is a different theta r than this. This is the reflected and this is the refracted. So some light gets reflected, but as you know, light goes through glass and so some of the light, when it changes speed here, going from fast to slow gets bent toward the normal here. This refracted angle is smaller than this incident angle and so it gets bent and when it gets bent it goes through the glass um, while it's going through the glass some of the light energy is warming the glass it's being absorbed so we get three things we get reflection 
we get refraction, the light bending, and we get absorption, some of the energy is absorbed in the glass and the glass warms up from the light going through it. And when it hits the other side, we get another interesting thing. We still get another reflected ray. So now this angle of reflection would be equal to this angle of incidence. So this refracted light becomes the incident light as it's going out. And now when you go from slow to fast, remember that the refracted light will bend away from the normal. It'll bend outward. An interesting thing is when it bends outward, it will be following along the same lines as the incident light was originally. So in other words, this line will be parallel to this line. And notice that it shifted over slightly because of the bending. So there's a slight shifting here. And you saw that shifting with the pencil um, breaking apart and uh, being in different locations. Uh, this, by the way, this reflected beam will come up here and will refract out and bend out and be parallel to this reflected beam. Sometimes when you look in a piece of glass and it's dark on the inside and it's light out here, you'll see your reflection and you'll actually see a ghosted reflection that is nearby. Put your hand by a piece of glass uh, and uh, see the reflections and you'll see that outline and that ghosted reflection is from this ray that comes back out here. These, this would be a great illustration to note carefully. This is a video of an aquarium with dirty water showing a beam of light going into that dirty water. And when the beam of light goes into the dirty lot water, you can see the refracted beam here because light travels faster in air than it does in water. So the beam is refracted toward the normal. There's a mirror down here in the bottom that's being rotated here. And we can see that when the light goes straight up it goes straight out and there's no refraction but as the mirror continues to rotate here you'll notice that it is refracted out here and bends away from the normal and it follows reversible paths as we continue to to turn the mirror you can see the reflection on the inside here as the refracted beam bent 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 and finally stop bending over here and it was all reflected in into the water. Here we have some water we're going to pour into this uh, rectangular container and uh, when we pour pour this water in the rectangular container we'll shine some light through it and we shine it straight through it'll be straight but when we shine it at an angle we'll see that there's reflection and then there's also refraction and here's that other way that ray that's reflected back and comes out parallel and here's the other refracted ray that comes out the other side and notice that this is parallel with the original ray that went in and we bend it back the other way we get the same effect just going to the other side now we have a glass block it'll work the same way as water did um, but it glass will refract a little bit more so it'll bend a little bit more than the uh, than the water did. Nevertheless, it shows the reflection at the front surface and it shows refraction in the glass and then refraction back out the other side when it bends back. And here's that secondary reflection that comes here and comes out. And that secondary reflection is why you get ghosting around an image when you get reflection in the glass. Well, that's enough for now. Here's Scratch's parting thought. And I hope you have a bend but don't break attitude as you strive for continuous improvement.